Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of Crumbs and Corkscrews where I, Lou, your dessert obsessed baker, share with you my tried and tested deliciously easy dessert recipes. But this week we're going to be doing something a little bit different because we're going to be going back to basics and I'm going to be sharing with you my essential baking toolkit. Now, I'm always getting questions and comments about the equipment I use, so that's why I do try and share with you my favorite, most loved tools that I believe will help you get started on your baking journey or if you're just looking to get some new equipment. So let's get started. Now, I know you guys absolutely love measuring cups and they're really quick and easy to use, but baking is a science and trust me when I say that weighing out your ingredients will be the best thing you ever do to help your baking. When something goes wrong, nine times out of 10, it's because we've inaccurately measured our ingredients. So I really recommend a set of digital scales. So these are my favorite set of scales. These ones are from Salter and I've had two sets of these for over 15 years. They're really inexpensive. They've got a large display and you can select different units on them. And because they're flat and there's no bowl, you can weigh straight into whatever you're adding your ingredients into. I absolutely love them. I also have a set of measuring spoons and these help me with smaller measurements of things like vanilla extract or baking powder or baking soda. So that's the most important tool for me. And you can grab a set of scales from Amazon or other kitchen stores or even your supermarket. They're super great and you just can't go wrong. The next thing in my toolkit is a mixer. Now there are so many out there from budget friendly to all singing or dancing top spec ones, but ultimately, a handheld mixer with a powerful motor and a variable speed, you can't go wrong. For budding home bakers, they're affordable and versatile. But if you're baking a lot or in large batches, I'm here absolutely repping the KitchenAid Stand Mixer fam. <laughs> yes, it's an expensive gadget, but think of it as an investment. The best thing about Stand Mixers is you can pop the ingredients in, turn it on, and it leaves you hands-free for other things. If you've got one or if you invest in one, it will make your baking life so much simpler. But you do really need a mixer of some form or other, especially for making things like meringues or whipping cream or whisking over a double boiler. But I bet you, if you open your kitchen drawer, you've got one of these, a balloon whisk. These are perfect for whisking just about anything else. Just make sure the balloon is big and sturdy and it will help you incorporate lots of air into your batters. So whilst you're rummaging around in your kitchen drawer, have a look, see if you've got one of these, a flexible silicone spatula. I've got all sorts of sizes and they're perfect for folding ingredients in or flour without knocking air out of your batter, scraping the last bits out of the bowl or <laughs> with this smaller one, the Biscoff jar. <laughs> and that really is why I love this silicon spatula. Now you can grab these quite cheaply on Amazon or in your local kitchen store. These ones are actually from Ikea. And what you're looking for is ones with a sturdy handle but a flexible rubber blade. Now, you can never have enough bowls. Trust me, if you've ever made a rainbow cake, you'll know exactly what I mean. Now you've probably got plenty of bowls in the cupboard so you won't need to invest in these but having lots of different sizes will make your life so much easier. I love, love, love my stainless steel bowls but also my glass ones as well. I use them for my batters as well as melting chocolate or whisking meringues. Next on my list is my palette knives. I can't tell you guys how much I love palette knives, especially my offset one. I think I tell you how much in every video and I can't imagine baking without them anymore. They're an absolute game changer, especially this one for leveling batters and frosting cake. The offset palette knife has this crank in the blade which stops you dragging your fingers through the batter as you smooth it over. It gives you absolute complete control. I swear by a Teco palette knives and you can grab these on Amazon in all different sizes. If you add one of these to your baking toolkit, it will change the way you bake forever. Now, no baking toolkit is complete without baking parchment. I use this for lining my cake pans, my brownie pans, and I always have a roll in the cupboard. You can pick it up really easily in your local kitchen store or your supermarket, but if you use a lot, order a large roll online and it will last you for ages. But remember, baking parchment is very different to greaseproof paper. Baking parchment is treated with silicon so your bakes won't stick, but if you're using a greaseproof paper, you will need to grease that with something like my homemade cake release, otherwise your bakes will stick. 
Now, if you haven't come across one of these before, this is another baking game changer. It's a silicone baking mat, and it will change the way you bake things like cookies, macarons, pavlova bases, and so much more. You literally place the mat onto your baking sheet, pop your cookie dough or your meringue batter onto it, and it won't stick. And it really helps give an even bake as well. The best thing is as well, you give it a good wash and it's reusable. These seal pack ones are still going strong after so many years. For cupcakes, I just use regular cupcake liners that I can pop straight into my cupcake pan. And I tend to keep a mix of large and mini cupcake liners in the cupboard. You can find them really easily online in all sorts of colors, patterns, designs. I just tend to stick to a regular white one. And for the mini ones, I found the best ones are in Lakeland if you're here in the UK. So before we get on to the most important part of the video, there is one more gadget I need to tell you about. And this one is going to blow your baking mind. It's an ice cream scoop. <laughs> now this was a huge revelation for me when I first learned about it. Using an ice cream scoop to portion out your cupcake batter or your cookie dough will mean you get even servings. And there's no more faffing with scraping spoons. You just scoop and go. You can pick up a set of three of these different size scoops uh, on Amazon. They've all got trigger handles, so there really is less mess and faff. I absolutely love using them, and I do find that there's less wastage, so my recipe stretches that a little bit further. And finally, baking pans and tins. Now, I bet if you go and open the cupboards, just like me, you'll have so many different kinds and different sizes pans in there. But I'm gonna try and help you, and I'm gonna talk about the ones that I think are essential for starting out and why I like the tins I use. Some bakers swear by aluminium bakeware as it cools down as quickly as it heats up. And I do have some of these in the baking cupboard as well. But for me, I prefer heavy gauge pans and I love, love, love Masterclass pans and trays. They give a really even golden bake and those beautiful golden edges. If you head over to Amazon, you'll find they're really reasonable in price and I've not found anything that will beat these yet. I don't really recommend silicone bakeware. I just find I don't get as nice a bake or those really lovely golden edges. So for your bakeware collection, here are the pans and tins I think are essential and you should have. First up is the one I use the most. This is a regular six inch round cake pan with a loose bottom. And I have three of these for baking individual layers in. But if you get the deep ones, it doesn't matter. You can bake the whole cake in there and split it up. This is also the Masterclass Heavy Gauge and I have these in eight inch as well. For brownies and tray bakes, I sometimes and actually quite often use a nine inch square cake pan or maybe a rectangle brownie tray bake pan that's about 10 to seven inches in dimensions. For larger tray bakes, I tend to recommend a 13 by nine pan. And this is great for sheet cakes. It will give you that perfect layer that's ready to frost and decorate. Now, this little fancy one is my go-to bundt pan. I picked this up in Aldi about 10 years ago. <laughs> I absolutely love it. It's about seven inches diameter and it's the perfect size for a small family cake. My larger Nordic ware bundt pan is heavy gauge, but you can also see it's really detailed in design. When you use these, you have to make sure you use plenty of cake release to help demold them. They're beautiful, but expensive. If you're just starting out, my little bundt pan is non-stick and you can grab one of these on Amazon really easily. I also have a selection of loaf pans for drizzle loaf cakes, bran loaves, and a one pound pan will cover you for most cakes and bakes that you want to make in there. Now, if you've watched my cheesecake recipe videos, you know that my other favorite pan is a spring form pan. This is the one with the clamp on the side, and this helps you easily lift the outer ring away after your cheesecake has set without having to faff about, and it makes your life so much more simpler. For any baked like tarts or pies, I'll typically use a loose baked tart tin, and that helps me lift the tart out to display it unless I'm serving it in the dish it was baked in and then I might use a ceramic dish instead. And lastly, baking sheets. These you want for cookies, meringues, macarons, but also sometimes you want just to stand your cakes on something whilst they're in the oven. You can pick these up quite easily and cheaply. You can grab them in the supermarket, but you want to look for ones that are double layered and that means they won't buckle from the heat of the oven. So there you have it. That is my baking essential toolkit. These are the basics that I'd go out and grab if I was starting my baking adventure all over again. And, and once you've found your feet, you might find you have a favorite brand or gadget that you prefer and I bet you end up on that never-ending quest to fill all the kitchen cupboards with baking equipment just like me. 
If you've liked this video, I've got others in the pipeline, including my favorite ingredients that I just can't live without. So let me know your thoughts about it in the comments, but be sure to check out my recipe videos where you can see how I use all these pieces of equipment. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you on the next video. See ya.